Well, hi again, everybody. Welcome to my latest video. Well, in this video, I'm going to do a review of another capture card. This is from a company called Buy Easy, and I got it free of charge, full disclosure, from the U.S. distributor somewhere in the southeast. One thing, though, to note is this box got pretty dinged up. It took a little bit longer in, the, in getting to me when they said it was going to ship. It could be that they just shipped it late, but it could be that this thing took a route through the the system of the shipping service that they provided that may not have been standard but I wanted to show that to make sure that there's no misunderstanding I have not opened it up yet but we'll see if there's any damage to it hopefully not and also make sure that when I do hook it up which will be part of this video as well hook it up run OBS do some testing of it see how it looks see what its overall resolution is it's supposed to be a 1080p 30 but we'll see and it's supposed to not only have, which is different from the previous ones that I reviewed, this one has both a HDMI in and an HDMI out. And also it has a connection for some additional power that you can either hook up a 5 volt power supply to, or you can just connect it, I believe the cable is in here to do that, connect it up to one of your USB ports and provide it with the extra power. It does provide USB output, standard USB capture device, so we'll see how that does. When I do have it in OBS, I'll also do the little thing that I did with the clock, the digital clock, and see if I can get a measurement of the latency. I'll have to take multiple measurements on that. First with the directly through this as compared to my Elgato capture card, because I know that as a constant, how much of a latency that has, and this will be a compared to that. So we'll see what the differential is. Let me go ahead and open this up and see what's inside. Let me open this box up. I'll need my knife or scissors to get in there. Got my Swiss Army knife, which I don't screw things in with. Let's see, does it have any other tapes around here? Nope, that's it. Open this up. Dinged up around here quite a bit. Looks like this thing also took a banging. It looks like it's banged against here as well, so hopefully we're okay. Take it out of this little protective plastic. There it is. It says HD video capture by easy. Here's the HDMI. Looks like this one's labeled input and this one's labeled output. On the other side, it has the USB connector and it has the DC 5 volt power connector on it. Okay, so it's looking like it has everything. I don't see it dinged up. It's got a nice, it's really metal. It looks like it would need special tools to take this apart, which I may do. After I test it, we'll see about that, okay? Feels like aluminum, although it feels like it might be a combination of aluminum and steel because it's, it's a bit heavy, a little heavier than I thought. Get this out, what do we got in here? Two cables, that's good. One cable is a straight USB type A, USB 2.0 based upon the color they chose, which is what I expected. And then we have this one, which is the power adapter from USB. Okay, no HDMIs, but I didn't expect those. It's got a user manual. Let's see. Well, they go through um, what's in the box, what's in the package, looks like. And they give you some instructions, how to operate it. Looks like they actually tell you here, open OBS. So they're expecting you to be using this at OBS. Okay, that makes sense, I guess. Pictures you can't see because they're in black and white. They're kind of small. I could not find a manual for this online. It's a maximum input resolution of 4K 30 frames per second. They put it as HZ. That's a little confusing. Why would they call it HZ rather than frames per second? And then they said a maximum output is 1080p, also 30HZ for hertz, not for <laughs> frames per second. So uh, maybe there's a translation error in here, most likely what it is. So I just wanted to give a brief look at the user manual. Okay, the next thing I'll do is I'll hook it up and we'll see what it looks like. I'll show how it gets hooked up to the computer just to, just to let you know. Okay, let's see how this hooks up. I have the HD video capture device from ByEasy. I've connected the two USB cables it came with, one for power and one for the output. So let me connect the output first. I'll just pick one of my USB 3.0s that are right here, even though it's not a USB 3.0. And then I'll take the one for the power and I'll just connect it to one of the other USBs that I have here. Okay, so it's all connected. There's no lights on it to indicate that it's working. So that's one thing to consider. There's no way of really know that it's powered on. 
But I have here my Sony camera. And I have the HDMI cable connected to it. So it'll be an HDMI out. And here's the other end of that cable here. And I'll connect it to the input HDMI that's over here. So that's the input, that's the output. I'll connect it to the input. And then I will turn my camera on. For the Sony, all I have to do is really just open up the back. And you'll be able to see what it's looking at. I'll just point it at the phone for now. Let me show you what I'm looking at. Look at the back of the camera. And you'll see that the screen is pointing at the phone. And the little screen there. We're all connected here. Now we'll go to my computer screen. And I'll open up the camera application. The regular Windows camera application. Right now it doesn't see the camera. It is plugged into the USB, so let me do a little switcheroo on the... And there we go. It sees the camera through the HDMI. Now what I'll do further is I'll connect this monitor, which has a separate cable on it that connects to a regular HDMI, an extra port that's on this monitor. I'll connect this one up to the HDMI out. And let's see what happens here. It's asking if I want to switch to that HDMI. I will say OK. And there we go. We can now see on the monitor full screen the output from the capture card. So that's pretty nifty. So we know the pass through works as well. So if you look at the, the HDMI capture right now, you'll see that I have it set up exactly this way. I have the two USB 2.0s. This is the output USB one. That's the power one. And then I have the input HDMI from my camera. And then I have the output HDMI to this 27 inch monitor that's up on the screen here. I'm curious. I wonder if it really needs that extra power. Let me go ahead and disconnect the actual power that we put in with the second USB. So I'm just going to unplug this power thing here, the five volts and see what happens. Did it change anything? Definitely not up on the full screen monitor. Let me go back to the camera app and it didn't change that either. So the camera app still sees it as well. Now, I don't know if I'd leave it that way. There's a reason that it's asking for the second power. Also, you never know what the capabilities are of your USB ports. So it may be that mine are providing more than enough current through the same USB port that it's giving output to, which is what I expected it to see it. But if you have a PC that doesn't have that same level of current capability, then this auxiliary might be necessary. I just wanted to show you that. Okay, it works like a charm. Okay, similar to what I did in a previous video, I'm going to check the default latency of my Elgato 4K60 device with this test. So let me start this. And what I'll do is I'll do a screen capture of this. And that should do it. I'll display this on the screen. Okay, here is the testing of the Byeezy in terms of its latency. Set it up the same way I did before. Let me go ahead and hit start, and then I'll do a screen capture. And what I'll do now is I'll put this one up on the screen. Okay, for completeness, I'm going to take the no-name capture card that I reviewed previously, and I'm going to hook that up to the camera. Okay, we got the green light. So that was interesting. When I hooked up the no name card to this thing, it actually would not have any output when it was in 4K, my camera. So I had to change it back to 1080p in order to see something on the screen. So let me go ahead and do the test and see what the latency is. I will start this test and then I'll do a screen capture. Okay, that does it. Let me. Put this up on the screen now and you'll see what the results are and I'll put a chart at the end. This is a snippet from the OBS log files showing how the BiEasy device has identified itself to OBS. In this chart, I show the three devices with the raw latency measured, which include the PC delays. Finally, this chart shows the two devices that I specifically tested with the two latencies normalized to what the PC delays are. Well, that completes my box opening, review, and testing of this BiEasy video capture device. As you saw, I also compared it to the original capture device that I reviewed a few months back. 
In terms of latency, which I did measure this time, you know, with a special technique that I developed a couple of videos back, that's actually measuring from the time it enters the device until it appears in the application, so I think it's fairly accurate. It did pretty good. Both of them did pretty good in terms of latency. This one in particular, I thought, you know, had the added advantage of having the pass-through for the HDMI. And also, as I noted in one of my clips that I did while I was doing the testing, this one also worked with accepting 4K input and converted it to 1080p output. So that's a nice feature to have. It's a bit more costly than this one. This one is probably maybe two and a half times the cost, as I recall. But I'll put the display ad from Amazon for it up on the screen right now. And you'll actually find the link down below in my notes if you're interested in purchasing this. Not bad, even for, I think it's around $50. Even for that price, it's still a not, not bad in terms of what you get from it, in my opinion. But, you know, that'll be for you to decide. Now, I also tested the latency between the two HDMIs or the pass-through. It was negligible, like less than, I think, 15 milliseconds. That didn't play a role in that at all. So hopefully you got something out of this video and you found it useful in some way. And if you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. And until the next time, thank you for watching.